understand uh, congratulations are in order. Can you tell us about uh, the birth? Yeah. Um, gave My wife gave birth to a little baby boy, Nicholas, yesterday. So I was there with her and super pumped and excited to have the new addition to the family. And he, uh, he fits right in with the others. They love him. Been all over him, so we got our hands full, but we're we're excited. Were you allowed to be in with the COVID rules and stuff? Were you allowed to be in, be in at the birth and things? Yeah, I was. Uh, they just had a few, I guess, loopholes to jump through like normal, I would say. Just some temperature screenings and uh, paperwork to fill out, and then I got to be there for the entire thing. They kept us in our own room. Um, nothing really outside of the ordinary. If you've ever been in a birthing room before, uh, I was there and they just took her in. They kind of limited who could be in there. So I guess it was a little better. Not so many nurses and doctors coming in and out. So we had a little bit more privacy. So that was enjoyable, but uh, it went off without a hitch. and. Uh, couldn't be happier. How many children is this for you and your wife? The, we have five total. That was baby number five. We have two girls and three boys now. And can you confirm how you're spelling Nicholas for us? Uh, very good question. N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S? Is that the traditional spelling? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm, I'm terrible at spelling. My phone has robbed it of me, but I, I believe that's it. We won't hold that against you. Thank you. <laughs> what's it like, what's it like to, to uh, Yeah, go ahead, George. Greg, what's it like to be with the new team after so many years and with John Foxwell over here as well? Um, it's unique, I would say. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, coming in the, to the NFL, you don't really know what to expect. Um, and so going into that situation, it was, um, it's all I've ever known. And so that's what I thought the NFL was. And I did that for eight years and now switching to a new team, seeing that that's not always the way things are. And, but also having that familiarity with Coach Fossil is, is huge. So um, it's kind of the best of both worlds for me. I get to be with the guy that brought me in the league uh, who I have so much respect for. I think he's the best coordinator in the NFL. And then also the excitement of being in a new city, new teammates, getting to know all the guys in the locker room. It's just, uh, I couldn't be happier. Last year was such an uncharacteristic season for you. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and what you were dealing with physically and maybe any uh, approach you took in this off season coming off the last season to get ready for this one? Yeah, um, I think anytime you have a bad year, which last year was a terrible year for me, no, no excuses there. Uh, you, you go back and see, you know, what, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? And um, for one reason or another, it didn't go the way I would want. But now I'm here and have new teammates, new opportunities. And so just being healthy, feeling good, feeling confident in everything that I'm doing, um, as I'm, I think I'm ready to go right now. Uh, obviously, we still have a few me weeks of camp to go for me to fully dial in everything that I need um, to be ready. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, obviously. Uh, big, big week one, get to see the Rams again, so that'll be fun, but uh, I'm excited. Coach Fossil mentioned you, you kicked through a groin injury last year that prevented you from, from practicing for a good stretch of the season. Looking back on it, do you kind of regret doing that, or, or did, and how much did that impact you? No, I don't, I don't regret any decision I have made. Uh, if I'm out there, regardless of how I feel or anything, I should make kicks. And so there's no excuse for not making kicks. You can ask any guy in any locker room. No one feels 100% all the time. And so... Uh, to make some type of excuse for that, I think, is unacceptable. And so me not performing to my expectations is on me. And that's why I'm working here, to be better so that doesn't happen again. And that's my approach moving forward. Greg, what's the upper, 
Greg, what's the operation been like with Chris and LP so far and working with those guys? It's been awesome. Uh, that's one of the biggest things as a kicker, switching from someone that you've known for eight years with Jake and Johnny to uh, completely unknowns with LP and Chris. But since day one, they have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, LP being around so long, he is a master of his craft. Um, he, the way he snaps the ball and his knowledge of the game is phenomenal. And I can't say enough about him. And then Chris, he works at everything, not just his holding, uh, but his punting as well. His punting is awesome. Uh, he is very, very skilled, and I'm super happy to have him as my holder as well. Um, he, he knows these little things and asks all these little questions about what I'm wanting, and so just I can tell he's done it before, and he knows what he's doing. So I'm very pleased with, to, with them and uh, our whole operation. You mentioned before that you think Coach Hoss was the best coordinator in the league. What is it about him? I and mean, obviously, we've seen the 87,000 fake punch you guys have done over the years and things like that. What is it about him that make, you think makes him number, the best coordinator? Um, it's not just the, I would say it's almost outside of football. Uh, obviously, his X's and O's is, I mean, he sets the bar with the fakes and everything that we do, the coverage schemes, the protection schemes, it's, he knows what he's doing. He's obviously awesome at that, but it's how he goes about teaching the guys what it is that is expected of them, not putting them in bad positions. He'll never ask them to do something that they can't succeed at or that he won't teach them to do, first of all. And then inside of that, how he does it. It's really hard to describe how he does it. Um, you just have to kind of ask the core guys of what the way he teaches it. Um, it's in a way that it's almost like it's your dad teaching you. Um, he cares about each player so much, and that translates into guys in the locker room wanting to play hard for him, not just dreading it. And then he takes care of you at practice. Um, he's not going to beat you down. And so uh, I hope I'm kind of giving you a, an idea of what it is that he does, because I really can't put my finger exactly on it. Um, he's just a fantastic leader, and I can't say enough about him. Obviously, I'm trying, but it, there's just something about him that um, he's awesome. You had such a small community. Did you last year happen to notice that the Cowboys were having struggles in the kicking game? Um, not really. Anytime you are looking at other teams and seeing how their kicking game's going. It's usually just the opponent that you're playing that week. And so, uh, no, not really. I'm mainly worried about myself because I was not doing so hot. <laughs> so there's that. But no, um, I didn't think about anything uh, in regards to the Cowboys other than eventually uh, Brett came and worked out for the Rams uh, with one of my injuries after he'd been released, and that was really the first time that I realized, you know, the Cowboys had some stuff going on, and I talked to him, and, you know, he's a good guy. I, mean, I talked to Brett quite a bit, and then from there, we played the Cowboys, I think, the next week, and Kai was down here, and Kai's a great kicker, and, uh, you know, talked to him a little bit about everything that was going on, and, you know, one thing led to the next, and here I am, so... Uh, best th thing I can do is just go out there and make kicks. It's a little bit of an unusual camp with just you as the kicker. What's that like for you? Is it lonely or anything? No, no. Uh, I don't think camp's ever lonely. You always got the punter and the long snapper to <laughs> go around with. So we, we stay busy. Um, I'm used to having another guy in camp. Uh, but with just with the way stuff is set up with no preseason games, in my opinion, I would like to have all the reps. That way uh, I can maximize the quality work that I get with the team because you can't really mimic those team reps in practice. And on that note, you really can't even rep team reps from a preseason game to a, a regular season game. And so there is kind of a, you know, how is it going to go when we are doing this for real? Because uh, there's, there's really no way to mimic 
uh, that, but I think we're doing as best of a job as we can right now, and uh, come whatever, September 13th, I think we'll be ready to go. Is it any tougher to sort of keep yourself sharp without the competition, if you will? No, no, never. I mean, just because there's another guy there kicking next to you does not change anything. You're competing, number one, against yourself to be the best version of you that you can be, and then you're also competing against every other kicker that's in every other camp and every other kicker that's not in a camp. Um, if you let yourself get complacent, bad things happen. And so just because there's someone not right there that you can see does not mean that the team's not looking to replace you or management is looking to replace you. You're always being judged, and so you have to go out there and perform every single day. I'm sure you were bored in that first game in that new stadium in L.A. Obviously, your plan is still be in it. But what do you think that thing's going to be like after seeing it come up over the years during your time in L.A.? Yeah, um, I think it's going to be a pretty sweet experience. Obviously, I got to go into the stadium when, I think it was last year, when they were building it. Um, and I still talked to Jake and Johnny over there, and they went there and said it was awesome. They loved it. And so it'll be exciting. Um, it's kind of cool to get to play your old team the very first game in a new stadium. And uh, I think there'll be a little bit, some a little bit of emotions just seeing the guys and what could have been in there. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I am so happy where I am. And so looking forward to playing them. And, uh, you know, it'll be a good, good fought battle. How do you like your hold? Some kickers like the ball be tilted backward a little bit or, you know, altered a little, a little bit away. How, how do you like your ball and how much time does it take to gain a rhythm with the holder? Yeah. Uh, I normally pretty much straight up and down slightly towards the holder uh, as I'm right footed, so towards Chris. Well, I guess that would be it for any, any, <laughs> sorry about that, any holder would do it slightly towards them regardless. But, uh, yeah, that's normally what I like. Chris is very good about that. He likes, he asks questions. Um, do I want it straight up and down, slightly towards him, lean forward if there's a wind, back, depending on any wind circumstances, he's very knowledgeable about that. And so uh, I have no worries there at all. I mean, he's phenomenal with it. And uh, all the work we've been getting, he's been spot on. So I think we're, we're on the path to success right now as far as operation. And I just got to do my part. What was, your, what was your first encounter like with John Southall? Was it, did he work you out I'm out of college? Uh, and maybe you can kind of detail how quickly the relationship that you guys have formed. Yeah, uh, he came and worked me out uh, probably a month before the draft when I was coming out of college. And he called me and said, hey, can you come work out? And I said, sure. He flew out to Missouri Western, which is where obviously where I went to college. And I was in Nebraska at the time, living at my parents' house. And so I drove down there, we met, and he put me through a workout session. And it was an okay, nothing too great. Um, asked me some questions, said, all right, see ya. And I, you know, I thought that would probably be about it because uh, I had a lot more interest from other teams and I really hadn't heard anything from the Rams. And so then a few weeks go by and it's about a week before the draft and he calls me again, asked me to come down. I said, sure, and went out, kicked with him again, went a little better, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, and talked to him again. And he said, all right, well, good to meet you. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you later. I said, okay, <laughs> that, was, that was really it. It wasn't too anything, anything too crazy. Um, and then obviously, he called me on draft day and said, hey, I think we're going to draft you. And it happened. So you had no indication prior to that phone call on draft day that you were his guy? No, no. I, I did not think that at all. Uh, obviously, like I said, the other teams had said, hey, we want to take you here or here. And uh, that didn't happen. Um, it may have because some teams were saying other things. But uh, when I got the call from Bones, I was very pleased, obviously, and landed in a great spot to be there with, for eight years with him. And obviously, I like him so much, I followed him here. <laughs> Greg, Coach McCarthy, Greg, Coach McCarthy, 
McCarthy mentioned that Coach Hossel was the MC the other night when y'all played a game at Jeopardy. How was he at that, and how do you think that factors into the personality that you've liked about him for so many years? Oh, if you don't know about Bones, he has ran this Jeopardy for since I've been in the league. He does it every year, and it is a spectacle to be had. It is one of my probably my favorite night of camp. It's super fun for all the guys. Um, he puts together all these questions of random stuff. I'm sh sure you heard from other people already about some football questions, some music questions, uh, spelling, just all kinds of fun stuff. And it gets the guys out of football mode for an hour and they're talking amongst each other and building chemistry. And so it's, a v it's very fun for the team, team building and uh, he does an awesome job with it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you.